Hi, I'm Natalie and today's drawing tutorial is going to be broken into two parts. The first part of the tutorial is all about upside down drawing. This is a really good method to use when you're learning to practice drawing exactly what you see. By breaking an image down into lines and shapes and understanding the relationship between them. It's also a really fun way to draw. The second part of the tutorial is all about using shading in your drawing and understanding tone and light source. This is really helpful if you want to make your drawings look more realistic and three-dimensional. We'll begin with the upside down drawing. To do your upside down drawing, you will need a pencil, paper and eraser. You will also need source material, something to draw. You could start with something simple and work your way up to something more complicated. I've decided to start with a simple line drawing of an apple. I've placed the apple so it's upside down facing me and I'm going to draw it around the same size. That's always easier. Because I'm right handed, I'm starting drawing on the left hand side. That way I can see what I'm doing as I, as I make my way along. If you're left handed, start on the right hand side. I'm going nice and slowly because I'm making sure that I'm always checking with my eyes, what do I see? The idea of placing something upside down to draw is it no longer looks quite the same. So we focus more on the lines and the shape of the lines and the angles that they are. See how I'm checking there? I'm looking at the space between the stem and the top of the apple. Now I want to measure from the top of the stem to where the leaf starts. But all the time I'm going nice and lightly with the pencil and making my way back along. A good way to measure the angle of something is to place your pencil at a horizontal line and tilt it until it matches the angle. You can then repeat that on your drawing. I find this really helps. Another thing that can help you get your angles right is to focus on the negative space. This is the space around and between an object. See how I'm looking here between the apple and the leaf. I'm trying to match that. If I can get that shape right, then I know for sure my drawing is on the right track. If you're drawing around a curved shape, make sure to move your hand so that it's comfortable and you can get a nice rounded edge and it won't be too angular. Now there you go, the apple's finished. Okay, we're going to move on to something a little more complicated. Like with the apple drawing, make sure the image is placed so it's upside down towards you. Make sure you're comfortable as well. This one's going to take a bit longer to draw. I'm going to take the same approach to drawing this as I did with the apple. I'm starting in the corner furthest away from me and I'm making my way slowly down the right, uh, the left hand side and I'm sketching nice and slowly. I'm moving my eyes along the lines of the image and then along the lines of my drawing just to be sure at each step that I'm happy with the line I've done and that it's matching the drawing that I'm working from. To get the angle of a curved line just right, you can trace over it on the original picture and then bring that back onto your drawing. See how I'm doing it here. Be sure when you're drawing to not just focus on the lines that you're doing, but also on the negative space. That's everything that is around or outside or between usually an object, but it, this can be between the lines. So when I'm checking my lines, I'm also checking the white space in between to see, does it match the drawing that I'm working from? Don't worry if some of your lines aren't quite right. You can use your eraser to rub them out, or you can always leave them in and just work around them. A sketch does not have to be perfect. I like to take my time when I'm sketching. That way I can spot any mistakes as I go, but I never get too worried about it. This is just practice. 
Remember to keep looking at your source material to check if the shapes that you're drawing match the shapes you see in the source material. I'm always looking to see what angle something is. The secret to being able to draw something so it looks just like the image you're working from is being able to look at it and see it broken down into shapes. We don't want to look at it as a whole thing, we just want to look at what shapes and lines is it made up of and how do they sit close to each other. That's a good way to train your brain to be able to see like an artist. You're using your observation skills to notice all the small details of an image. Try and give yourself plenty of time when you're doing an upside down drawing or a sketch that has a lot of detail. tutorial we'll be looking at techniques for shading and understanding tone. Pencils come in B and H ranges. The B pencils are always softer and the H pencils are harder. The higher the number in B, the softer the pencil. I'm starting with the 6B which is a really soft pencil. If I press really hard I can get a very dark tone out of it. As I come down the page I'm putting less pressure on the pencil. This will give me a much lighter tone. I'm going to repeat this exercise with all the pencils I have in my range. Can you see as I make my way through all the way to 4H how light the tones get? Don't worry if you don't have all those pencils. A 2B is the best pencil to begin with. That's the one you will be using most of the time. In this next exercise we're going to be looking at how a light source creates shadows. I've drawn a cube and we're going to imagine the light is coming from the top right hand corner. This means that at the back of the cube, there won't be much light reaching there at all. This will have the darkest shading on it. When we talk about tone, we're really talking about how light or dark something is. We can describe things not just in colours, but by their tone. To create a dark tone in your drawing, you might like to use a 4B pencil, or a 2B pencil if you press down nice and hard. For the back of the cube I've used a 4B, but I'm using a 2B pencil now on the edge. I'm just not pressing too hard. For the top I'm using a 2H. I just want to give it a slight tone. I don't want to make it look too dark, but I do want it to stand out from the white paper. To give your drawing good definition, pay attention to the edges. You might find that you need to come round at times and just tidy them up a little bit like I'm doing. Now we're going to work out the shadow and which way it's being cast. If the light source is coming from the top at an angle, then the shadow is going to be behind the block but coming at a diagonal. I'm using a 6B pencil here and pressing down quite hard because I want it to be much darker around the base where the cube touches the surface. 
I want it to stand out from the 4B and the 2B pencil that I used. The shadow is always darkest where the object meets the surface and the definition gets softer and the shadow gets lighter as it moves away from the object. For this next exercise, take a sheet of paper and roughly draw five circles coming down along it. Let's look at different techniques we can use for shading. We're going to imagine that the light source is coming from the top left hand corner. The first technique is the most commonly used one. We're literally colouring in with a pencil. We're pressing down harder for the darker areas and we get to get the lighter shades we're just putting less pressure with our hands. I'm going back over the shading that I've already done with my pencil just so that there's a nice and smooth transition between the dark area and the light. If you're shading something that's curved or has a rounded surface, don't do straight lines. That will give it an impression as if it's a flat surface. You want to try and move your pencil in the direction that the surface actually would go if it was the three-dimensional object. Can you see how I'm building up the darker areas by going over and over with the pencil? Pressing down hard to get a much darker tone at the bottom. As I come up, I'm barely putting any pressure on the pencil. When you think you have the object finished, don't forget to put the shadow underneath. This will make it look like it's sitting on the paper. Shadows aren't always darker than the object itself. But the darkest part of the shadow is always where the object is touching the surface that it's sitting on. Remember, as a shadow moves away from an object, it gets lighter and the edges of it get softer. Because the light source is coming from the top left hand corner, the shadow is reaching out a little further to the right hand side. The next technique we're going to look at is cross hatching. This is where you build up darker areas by using lines that cross over each other. The closer you put the lines together, the darker the area is going to look. If you just want to give an impression of a very light tone, you can just put a few lines here and there. But remember that you're moving around, that you're not putting straight lines if you're drawing onto a circular shape. Keep building up the lines to get the darker tones. When it comes to the shadow underneath it, I want to give the impression that the ball is sitting on a flat table. I'm not going to use circular lines for that. I'm going to be doing straight lines, but still criss-crossing each other. The next technique is called scumbling. This is one of my favourites. It's a nice loose style of putting wiggly lines and marks down on a page. You can really have fun with this one. Again, a bit like the cross hatching, you're trying to build up the dark tones by the lines crossing over each other, but it's way more loose. There are no real rules for scumbling. Just let your pencil dance across the paper. I'm even going to use the scumble technique for the shadow. We're going to move on now to smudging. Your 2B pencil is going to be great for this and if you have a 4B pencil that will come in handy. Because the B range pencils are soft, they're ideal for smudging. Remember, the higher the number of the pencil, the softer it is. That means it's easier to smudge. It's also easier to get all over your hands while you're drawing, so just keep an eye out for that or keep an eraser handy for cleaning the paper afterwards. I'm using a 2B and a 4B for this. The 4B for the darker underside of the ball. Because smudging is so messy, I'm using the eraser to rub out some of the pencil marks from the ball to put my highlight in. When you're using the smudging technique, you don't have to colour everything in with the pencil. You can just put it on the darkest areas and then blend it out from there, like I'm doing with the shadow. Remember to pay attention to the edges of your object. 
particularly if you've been using a messy technique for shading. As a finishing touch, I'm giving the ball more definition by cleaning up any smudges that have gone outside of the circular shape and darkening the bottom edge of the ball near where it meets the surface it is sitting on. The final technique we're going to look at today is stippling. This is where you build up an impression of tone by doing lots and lots and lots of dots. The darker you want the tone to be, the more densely you need to have put the dots together. For a lighter area, just have a few dots scattered here and there. This is a fun technique, but it does take time and patience if you want to do a good job of it. 